Hi, hi there. It's uh, Ian Wright here. Just wanted to say a little bit of commentary on um, the course that I was uh, leading uh, last weekend, <clears throat> which was um, the yearly kind of meet-up three-day course for postgraduate osteopaths studying um, a diploma in, in paediatric osteopathy. Um, this is a course I've been running for eight, nine years now. So we've had sort of three co- cohorts of this three-year course, and this is for postgraduate osteopaths to develop their skills. We have a clinic here at, at the practice called the DAISY Clinic, which is a special needs clinic where we treat complex cases as a group. There's normally about 10, 12 osteopaths who all come together. And I have myself, and, and I normally bring in another lecturer, a teacher in paediatric osteopathy from the UK. Um, on this weekend course, we uh, there was there were three of us teaching actually, which was which was very nice. And I just wanted to comment on one of the lectures that was given about uh, breastfeeding um, because it's a really important subject and it doesn't seem it's not talked about enough and it should be talked about the entire time because it's a no-brainer whether or not to breastfeed is a no-brainer because there is so much increased evidence of the benefits to baby, to mother, to a whole ream of things. And I just want to go through some of the, the, the basic, simple areas. Um, there's a lot of research coming out about the effects and the positive effects on the baby's immune system. Because the mother's immune system is getting a direct contact to the baby's immune system, you're getting the the experience and the um, skill that's been based on a lifetime of, of, of function of the mother's immune system straight away. You don't get that with formula milks, no matter what they have in them. Interestingly, the they're saying now that actually... Breast milk varies with each feed. There's a feedback system from the baby where the mother... T- say, for example, the baby's got a cold. There will be a different immune content of... Actually, some of the, some of the, the white blood cells, etc., etc., in the mother's milk to help fight whatever infection or if there's a sense that if the body picks up that they're low in certain mineral, there will be a greater passage of mineral. It's like it is an incredibly complicated system of feedback which tailors each feed to the baby. It's astonishing. It's absolutely astonishing. And they're only just starting to get some sort of sense of this. Very, very important also in what everybody's talking about these days is is the gut biome. The biome is... Uh, the bacterial makeup of the gut, and they're shown that actually this is the most important process in terms of metabolism, digestion, um, gathering up nutrition, and immune function is probably the most important thing in our whole bodies, actually, overall. And, you know, we have two kilograms of bacteria in our gut as adults. Um, this biome development in in babies that are breastfed is absolutely 100% different than that in bottle-fed babies. So they have this fantastic greater start. Um, in there, I mean, the re- research in immune system, allergies decreased, asthma chances decreased, obesity down by 30% on average, type 1 diabetes down by 30%. They're, they're linking it with a possible type 1 diabetes they're linking with a possible reaction to something in um, cow's milk called uh, beta-lactoglobulin, which seems to possibly stimulate an immune response in the body, which can get crossed over into the pancreas and have an effect on the pancreatic function. But this cow's milk reactivity possibility will also give you asthma. <clears throat> um, it will give you eczema all these kind of immune system reactions that you don't actually necessarily get if you're breastfeeding. So there is a clear decrease in things like colic, reflux are improved. Um, The incidence of celiac disease is reduced by 52% in babies who've been breastfed. Otitis media, if they are fed for more than three months exclusively breastfed, 
there's a 50% reduction in middle ear infections in babies and children, which is amazing. Um, in the first year, there is a 72% reduction in lower respiratory tract infections, a 64% reduction in gastrointestinal infections. These are, I mean, these are huge figures, really. But also, another very important side of it is this skin-to-skin -skin contact. When a baby is breastfeeding, they will be looking up into mother's eyes, and that pro provides a beautiful oxytocin reaction in both mother and baby, which has this huge cascade in our bodies, which produces um, a bigger nurturing and a social support response in within our brains. It's, it's physiologically real. Um, so the eye contact and the skin-to-skin -skin contact has been proven to be m the best situation for, of, of course, emotional development. But also breastfeeding, because of the immune stuff, possibly because of the oxytocin reactions, has been shown to aid neurodevelopment. So optimal neurodevelopmental issues, especially in premature babies who can have compromise. If, if premature babies are breastfed, then neurodevelopmental issues are minimalized. It's very, very clear research on that. It's amazing, really. Um, the other thing that people never talk about is breastfeeding's cheaper. So it's fantastic, and obviously in the developing world, but it still costs a fortune. To have to buy all these these substitute milks, I was just looking at a, I was just testing a, <clears throat> a milk milk for a mother on a baby just to see if that the baby could handle the lactose, and I was looking at the uh, the carton of it, and it and it clearly says you know this is this is if you can't breastfeed, you know they 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 have to say that on there now because everybody knows that actually this is a substitute for breastfeeding, and breastfeeding is even the best, and they have to say this. The interesting thing also is it has a huge positive effect on. The mothers, the, the most obvious is the contractions of the uterus when uh, you're breastfeeding will bring the uterus back into shape, allow your body to realign and to heal quicker. Um, but there's other, there's other important benefits, health benefits, which, which have improved, a, a reduced incidence in rheumatoid arthritis, hypertension, cardiac issues, um, high cholesterol, um, a 24% decrease in breast cancer and other cancers too. So this is in a mum who's, who's breastfed, so that has an optimal response on the mother's body as well. So it, it's incredibly hard to not consider breastfeeding, really, you know. And <clears throat> the difficulty that a lot of people have is they're not supported enough um, at the beginning of breastfeeding. There's, a, there's an, an awful lot of babies that we see in the clinic that the mother tries to bre breastfeed, and they, and they can't, they're having great feeding difficulties and the baby's pulling at the nipple and not feeding correctly. So the first thing that we'll check for is tongue tie. Now, a lot of tongue ties in this country are missed by pediatricians and midwives because they are posterior tongue ties, which are at the back of the tongue, which aren't so obvious, but they absolutely affect the ability to breastfeed directly and I see this literally every day in the practice. Another massive issue is a lot of babies have depressed mandibles, their jaw is locked backwards a little bit because of being kind of caught in squished pre-birth in, 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 in the mother's uterus. Now when the jaw's locked, they can't open it because if you see a baby breastfeeding and latching correctly, the breast goes right in to the back of the mouth, actually. It's not, you're not poking, at, pulling away at the nipple, it's, the breast is right back, so, but their jaw has to be wide open in order to take in the breast and allow that movement, that, that lovely rhythmic movement of breastfeeding, which in itself helps with development of the palate and with the sinuses, so everything connects up and, 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 and works beautifully well together. You know, the problem is, is if there's difficulty in the first few days with feeding, latching, and all that kind of stuff, um, it's very tempting. And even in hospital, you know, the the midwife say, "Oh, we'll just give them a uh, we'll give them a bottle or two, just you know, because you're tired and things like that." Well, actually, you know, breastfeeding is actually going to help 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 mum, you know, 
pull herself together. It's very important to keep this flow and this rhythm and this connection. So it's so the whole the whole situation is absolutely vital, and we need breastfeeding con, um, consultants. We need those people out there right on hand to help people with difficulties. We need to be checking babies for posterior tongue tie. We need to be looking at the babies osteopathically to look at the function of their head, neck, possible feeding difficulty issues, reflux issues which can cause problems, mechanics of their jaw for, for really getting that, that mouth open to feed. There's a, there's a, there's a thousand things that we, we, that we will all check to see what could be causing any feeding difficulty issue or reflux or colic. That's what I spend a lot of every day doing. Um, anyway, this is a huge subject. This is just a little introduction. Be well. <laughs>